aware that there's still some who would question or even justify the offense of 9-11. These are not opinions to be debated. These are facts to be dealt with. Well, there are many, many ways to think of it, but historically, have governments ever faked incidents or incited incidents in order to get them into war? I'm they saying that. that in America we are fed propaganda, and if you want to know what's happening in the world, go outside of the U.S. media, because it's owned by four corporations. One of them is this one. And you know what? Go outside of the country to find out what's going on in our own country, because it's frightening. It's frightening. Even though the government never explained how the towers came down the way they did and never tested for explosives. And you know that building seven, a high rise, not Alex, like a fire Alex I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you there and ask you a question. We're, we've been getting a lot of calls lately on this show from people who believe that 9-11 uh, was, um, there's like a, a theory that it was an, an inside job. Uh, is this, are you part of a, a group or an effort that's trying to get this on the show? Well, actually, I've I've read um, in Homeland Security training brochures that 9-11 truth activists are potential terrorists. And I guess that means that my email records are among those that the government feels it can read and review. And I suppose that under the NDA, I could be indefinitely detained. And that has me concerned. Well, Alex, can you answer my question about if this is a group effort? Are you part of an organization or anything? I'm, I'm an American citizen. 19 men armed with box cutters directed by a man on dialysis in a cave fortress halfway around the world using a satellite phone and a laptop directed the most sophisticated penetration of the most heavily defended airspace in the world. Overpowering the passengers and the military combat trained pilots on four commercial aircraft before flying those planes wildly off course for over an hour without being molested by a single fighter interceptor. These 19 hijackers, devout religious fundamentalists who like to drink alcohol, snort cocaine and live with pink haired strippers managed to knock down three buildings with two planes in New York. While in Washington, a pilot who couldn't handle a single-engine Cessna was able to fly a 757 in an 8,000-foot descending 270-degree corkscrew turn to come exactly level with the ground, hitting the Pentagon in the Budget Analyst Office where DOD staffers were working on the mystery of the $2.3 trillion that Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld had announced missing from the Pentagon's coffers in a press conference the day before, on September 10th, 2001. According to some estimates, we cannot track $2.3 trillion in transactions. Luckily, the news anchors knew who did it within minutes. Osama bin Laden. The pundits knew within hours. Osama bin Laden. The administration knew within the day. Terrorists who committed these acts and those who harbored them. And the evidence literally fell into the FBI's lap. That a hijacker's passport was found blocks from the World Trade Center crash site, if you can believe that. He said that he saw a helicopter circle the building. He said that it appeared to be a U.S. military helicopter and that it disappeared behind the building where the helicopter landing zone is. He then saw a fireball uh, go into the sky. But for some reason, a bunch of crazy conspiracy theorists demanded an investigation into the greatest attack on American soil in history. That investigation was delayed, underfunded, set up to fail, a conflict of interest, and a cover-up from start to finish. It was based on testimony extracted through torture, the records of which were destroyed. It failed to mention the existence of WTC-7, Able Danger, p -Tech, Sibel Edmonds, OBL and the CIA, and the drills of hijacked aircraft being flown into buildings that were being simulated at the precise same time that those events were actually happening. It was lied to by the Pentagon, the CIA, the Bush administration, and as for Bush and Cheney, well, no one knows what they told it because they testified in secret, off the record, not under oath, and behind closed doors. It didn't bother to look at who funded the attacks because that question is ultimately of little practical significance. Still, the 9-11 Commission did brilliantly answering all of the questions the public had, except most of the victim's family members' questions, and pinned blame on all the people responsible, although no one so much as lost their job, determining the attacks were failure of imagination. Because nobody in our government at least, and I don't think the prior government could envision flying airplanes into buildings. Except the Pentagon, FEMA, NORAD, and the NRO. The DIA destroyed 2.5 terabytes of data on Able Danger, but that's okay because it probably wasn't important. The SEC destroyed their records on the investigation into the insider trading before the attacks, but that's okay because destroying the records of the largest investigation in SEC history is just part of routine record keeping. NIST has classified the data that they used for their model of WTC-7's collapse, but that's okay because knowing how they made their model of the collapse would jeopardize public safety. The FBI has argued that all material related to their investigation of 9-11 should be kept secret from the public, but that's okay because the FBI probably has nothing to hide. This man never existed, nor is anything he had to say worthy of your attention, and if you say otherwise, you are a paranoid conspiracy theorist and deserve to be shunned by all of humanity. Likewise him, 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 and her.
and her and her and him. My name's again. Her name is Sibel X. We turn now to Sibel X. I'm talking about those those people who made decisions not to act on certain translations, certain intelligence pieces before 9-11 and after 9-11. They haven't mentioned anybody who actually is connected to Al-Qaeda in mid or higher level. Muslim Arab type fellows and uh, what you're about to hear is, uh, is, is very disturbing. He claims he met three of the 9-11 hijackers in Shreveport a year before the attacks. This morning, local dentist David Graham is dead after the family says he was poisoned more than two years ago. At the time, Graham was trying to publish a manuscript about meeting three Middle Easterners in Shreveport. He feared they were plotting to bomb Boxdale. Graham wrote that he warned the FBI. Then after 9-11, he saw their pictures among the hijackers. And I said, I wanna, I'm, I'm an asset who covered Iraq and Libya at the United Nations, and I have a story to tell, and you need to hear what I have to say. And within 30 days, I woke up to hear the FBI pounding at my door. You are Susan Lindauer, you are hereby notified, you are under arrest on the Patriot Act. That began a, a five-year indictment. In five years, I was allowed one morning of testimony with two witnesses former chief of staff for a congressional member of Congress and Park Godfrey who verified the 9-11 warnings. My name is Kurt Sonnenfeld. For 10 years I worked for several different agencies of the United States government including the Federal Emergency Management Agency. In September of 2001 I was contracted to be the official videographer uh, following the attacks on Ground Zero of the World Trade Center. Because of the conclusions of what I saw and what I filmed, my life has been in danger for the past 10 years. Now, I live in Argentina as a political refugee. I used to be in charge of the visa section at the CIA's consulate at Jeddah, the principal city of the Hejaz in western Saudi Arabia. There, for a year and a half, I issued visas to terrorists recruited by the CIA and its asset, Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden lived in a cave fortress in the hills of Afghanistan, but somehow got away. Then he was hiding out in Tora Bora, but somehow got away. Then he lived in Abbottabad for years, taunting the most comprehensive intelligence dragnet employing the most sophisticated technology in the history of the world for a decade, releasing video after video with complete impunity and getting younger and younger as he did so, before finally being found in a daring SEAL team raid which wasn't recorded on video, in which he didn't resist or use his wife as a human shield, and in which these crack special forces operatives panicked and killed this unarmed man, supposedly the best source of intelligence about those dastardly terrorists on the entire planet. Then they dumped his body in the ocean before telling anyone about it. Then a couple dozen of that team's members died in a helicopter crash in Afghanistan. This is the story of 9-11, brought to you by the media which told you the hard truths about His head could be seen to move violently forward. And They took the babies out of incubators. And Mobile production facilities. And The rescue of just a lynch. If you love your country and or freedom, happiness, rainbows, rock and roll, puppy dogs, apple pie, and your grandma, you will never ever express doubts about any part of this story to anyone. Ever. Our understanding of what has already happened in Syria is grounded in facts, informed by conscience, and guided by common sense. Anyone who could claim that an attack of this staggering scale could be contrived or fabricated needs to check their conscience and their own moral compass. Anyone, just and their own moral compass.